Great. Well, we're so excited that Casa de las Campanas is joining us for our 6060 tour to celebrate Leading Age California's 60th anniversary. It's, it's been so exciting. Jack and I have been interviewing many of our members now, and it's been a really fun and interesting time uh, to get to know your organizations and to meet some of your residents. So a really fun time. Um, so Kim, I want to welcome you. Kim is on our board of directors. We're so thrilled to have you as part of our board of directors and um, would love it if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Casa de las Campanas. Sure. Thank you, Jeannie. My name is Kim Domini, and I'm the executive, executive director at Casa de las Campanas. I have been here for um, 13 years. I've actually been here. I consider it two tours of duty. I was here years ago as the healthcare administrator and was transferred to Florida and then transferred back. Um, Casa de las Campanas is a life plan community located in Northern San Diego County in the town of Rancho Bernardo. We are a not-for-profit type A. Um, we have a number of levels of care. We have independent, we have almost 500 residents assisted living, dementia care, and a skilled nursing facility. And we are in the midst of a large master plan project where we are bringing additional buildings on site and additional levels of care. So very exciting time, uh, very busy time, and especially when we've been impacted by COVID, but great, great time and looking forward to getting out of COVID and moving along with our master plan. So let, let's turn to Craig uh, as the board chair. That's a big role for in any organization, but to have you as their board chair. Why do you tell us a little bit about yourself, Craig, and uh, how you got to the role as board chair of Casa de las Campanas? Over the years, I became something of a civic leader. I've served on virtually all of the civic boards in the community, um, know all the business owners. As I grew my family and was involved with schools, um, got to know a lot of movers and shakers in the area. That led to my invitation to join the board at CASA. And at the time, it was not a very good time for me. I was serving a, a board role up at uh, Palomar Health. And um, chair of CASA's board kept knocking on my door. Knocked on my door for about nine months. The chair of the finance committee was leaving, uh, terming out at CASA. And, they wanted to fill Robin Jensen's role, and uh, they thought I might do a good job because of my financial services background. Finally said yes, joined the board, and after six years, um, I've now become chair of the board and um, no longer serving as finance chair, but now get to oversee uh, the whole board, and it's been fabulous. I'm really enjoying it. Oh, wow. Well, well, what are some of the challenges you faced uh, in your role as board chair? The challenges... I see as a director is we need to see into the future. I mean, to do a really good job, we have to be paying attention to the residents who live at Casa now. It's a fabulous rent residential campus. It's our role to make sure that they've got what they bargained for. And then some, you know, it's a hospitality health center and a playground campus all in one. So for them, they're looking for us to really be paying attention to what their needs are today, but really do a good job as a director. We need to be forward looking and see into the future. I would say the leading age plays a good role for that. Um, being kept current with all the leading age materials that come to me by electronic mail, going to leading age conferences. Um, I've had a good chance to see what other campuses across the United States are doing. And Chris, you've been at Casa de las Campanas as the administrator. Um, and what are, what are some of, tell us about yourself and what some of your uh, opportunities are at Casa de las Campanas. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Chris Burt. I was born and raised in Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, I'm a graduate of Indiana University. Um, I relocated to California with Life Care Services, whom I've worked with for going on seven years. Um, my first community was in the Bay Area. Um, I've been, since relocated and I've been with the healthcare administrator at CASA for six plus years. Um, in my role, I oversee our 99 bed health center, um, our 27 bed memory care, a 41 unit assisted living and CASA's independent living uh, wellness clinic. 
what are some of the opportunities, what are some of the challenges that you are facing as you think about even the last year going forward? Yeah, uh, the biggest challenge was just the psychosocial well-being of not only our residents, but our staff. Um, our staff came to work every day. They showed up, um, they geared up, they were there with our boots on the ground. Uh, so really keeping their morale high, uh, because if their morale stays high, their, our turnover stays low. Um, and that also reciprocates to the residents, um, keeping the residents' morale high. Uh, as soon as COVID really started to explode uh, back in March, we locked down all of CASA, um, no visitors. Um, we started restricting our vendors, things like that. So we really had to pivot to see how we could keep the morale and psychosocial well-being of the residents up. Um, one of our biggest tools was technology, um, Skype, uh, FaceTime, things like that, but not only for uh, keeping in touch with family members, but also for telemedicine. That was a big um, turning point because no, no one had been doing that previously. Um, we had physicians that were visiting much more frequently because of the telemedicine benefit. Um, and then again, um, just the entertainment aspect because our memory care is a very uh, activity-centered program. Um, and so we constantly would have entertainers in there and things like that. And so Jack, a little plug for you. We've been using It's Never Too Late for quite some time now. Yeah. Um, it really, really benefited our residents. We have the large 60 inch TV um, that's very interactive. And I would say we use that probably eight plus hours a day um, for our memory care residents. Um, we do have a smaller mobile one for our health center and we were able to utilize that as well. So really thinking outside of the box as far as how to keep as much normalcy as possible um, with COVID and the restrictions, it was like hitting a moving target. You do one thing one day, the next day you're not allowed to do it. Or there's a new restriction for this or a new regulation for this. And so it was, it was very challenging, not only for me, but for some of the other directors. It's just knowing what you can and can't do and how you have to do it. And Sunny, tell us a little bit about yourself as a resident at Casa de las Campanas. Hey, um, um, we... Bob and I were both very active in our professional lives. I was in government for over 30 years in elected office as a mayor and um, House of Representatives in Connecticut. And here at CASA, if this is not a mini replica of a town, I don't know what is. We're so fortunate to have the management, the board of directors that we have, and Chris and Kim in managing the pandemic for us has been absolutely amazing. Our record is wonderful. We feel safe. We've been safe. Uh, the management in, in general, uh, financially as stable as you could possibly be. And I've been in just about every activity you can imagine here at CASA, including the scholarship committee, which um, Kim has mentioned, I've been president of our resident association, and I'm so proud to be in the company that I'm in with the board of directors representing our residents with the board, seeing both sides, which I think is so essential. I couldn't be more active and um, enjoy every minute of that. What's something you're going to challenge yourself to do either this year or the next couple of years that you've never done before? Um, I don't know if Kim knows. Don't ask. That. Don't ask, Jack. It's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> she jumped out of an airplane. Totally no, that's what it sounds like. She, yeah. I did. I actually did. She jumped out of an airplane a couple of years ago. In my, that's on That's on my bucket list. Yeah. On, the, on our 80th year, Bob and I both 13,000 feet beautiful scenery to see and i'm here to tell you the tale 